Hello everyone, it's Cribby E. Welcome to the channel. Hope everybody's just having a wonderful day and that you are in the best of health and that you are enjoying life just like me. You might not be in the Caribbean, but you that said you're coming, I'm looking for you very soon. <laughs> Today again is another one of my inspirational messages. And this was entitled moving forward in a season of change moving forward in a season of change as you can look around you today you'll see everything's changing when I say everything I mean everything either it's changing or have changed already I just read the headlines the headlines say the Fed's gonna keep the interest rate almost below below zero almost until 2023. That'll tell you something. Talk about they're gonna keep inflation in track and uh, intact. There's a lot of things that are happening, happening and occurring now. It's because of the season that we're in. So this story today speaks about a people that was should have been in a forward motion but come to find out that they were slack slacking on their commitment to God God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness lazy trifling don't know what to do don't, ain't trying to find out what to do so this message is, is moving forward in a season of change and my subtitle was don't look back into bondage don't look back into bondage my scripture is coming from Exodus the 14th chapter and the 15th verse now let me give you the outline first before I get into the text there was a story that we all heard one time or another as we read the Bible and it was about the children of Israel and what happened was the children of Israel was in slavery it was in bondage they was frustrated so God looked at the children suffering and he said you know what I gotta do something about this it's just like you look at your child and your child's bringing home D's and F's you gonna turn the TV off and take the cell phone from them. Because if you don't, <laughs> it's gonna be a big trouble. So, this story takes us back over 2,000 years ago. Where the children of Israel was under the hateful, hateful slave master called Pharaoh and his men. They were in trouble. And God said, it's time for me to respond and do something about this. So he calls up Moses and said, Moses, I have a job for you to do. I want you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses probably thought, well, Lord, it's, it's not, maybe I'm not the one that you want. Maybe you want to try to get somebody else. But he said, Moses, let my people go. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So, as we look at the story, Pharaoh was proud and boisterous. He was a king. He wasn't, he, he wasn't, he wasn't about to let nobody go. But they loved people being on lockdown in slavery. So what happened was, God began to send some plagues. He sent us some plagues, one by one from locusts to killing of children babies uh, animals dying all kinds of hell hell all kinds of plagues to get Pharaoh's attention and finally after all of this suffering that Pharaoh caused himself 
and his country and his people he said wow I might as well let the children of Israel go Moses he said okay so the children of Israel began to follow Moses it was a big exodus then when, 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 when they began to march March got the marching orders they was excited. They was jubilant. Because they know we're finally getting out of here. That's how I felt when I left uh, <laughs> New Jersey some years ago. And recently Vegas some years ago. You feel happy being free. You feel happy not being in chains. There's just something about it that's turned your whole world upside down. So this was a joyous time for the children of Israel. Because they had been on lockdown for several years in chains. They couldn't do what they wanted to do. They, they was whipped. They was beat. They had to work from sun, sun up to sun down. That was their lives. Until God decided to send Moses to speak to Pharaoh. Sent a whole bunch of plagues. And they finally let those people go. Now, you know, they got their marching orders. Moses is leading the pack. Now we're in Exodus 14, chapter the 15th verse. And it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Because Moses kept crying out to God. Because the people, at some point, had started tripping. He said, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Okay? Because we got a movement going on here. He, God told Moses to tell the people to get moving. He said, use your, he said, use your shepherd's staff. Hold it out over the water when you get to the Red Sea. And a path will open up before your very eyes through the sea. Then all the people of Israel will walk through on dry land. Now, this has got to be one of the biggest miracles I've ever heard in the Bible itself because how in the world you gonna open up the sea that people can walk through it that case you could go to New Jersey and look on the beach and part the Red Sea of, of the Atlantic Ocean and people can walk from New Jersey to Atlantic City all the way over to Germany, to Europe. It'll be a pathway to walk, I'm gonna drive. That's that's what it was, pretty much. He opened up the sea. And Moses heard God's command and obeyed his voice. Now, as I look at and study the book of Exodus, I see freedom. I see freedom from the sun up to sun down. Exodus is a great book. The people of Israel are getting freed and they're on their way to some place that's flowing with milk and honey. That was the plan. God just don't want to free you, but he wants to take you to another, completely another realm in your life. And that's what he did for me. And that's why I be smiling all the time. Because I know from which I came. That's Exodus. Now we have the book of Numbers. And we have death in Numbers. You see the difference? Exodus brings us freedom, but death comes with Numbers. So, what is the book of Numbers talking about? What is its origin? What is the story? What is the big deal about the book of Numbers? Well, first of all, the Israelites now are wandering in the desert for 40 years. So something happened. So let me back up just a little bit. Let me, let, me, let me back up because we're at the point of the story where the children of Israel was following Moses. Moses puts out the staff, shepherd staff. The people are walking towards the Red Sea. 
And when they walked toward the Red Sea, and this was a great period of time that that water was, he just parted that sea and that water was just like this. And the people were just walking. From every age group, they were just walking through the Red Sea to freedom. But somewhere during the line, Pharaoh changed his mind. And he started chasing now down the children of Israel and Moses. So they began to cross and Moses said, let's move quickly. I just heard what God said. He said, let's keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. I need movement. I need what God said. Move. You better move. Move. They kept moving because the enemy is behind you. That's why sometimes in life, when situations get, get to you, you got to keep moving because you know the enemy is trying to bring you down. He's trying to slap you down and knock you down. You got to keep moving. That's the goal because when we see movement, we see progress. But once you stop moving, then we got a problem. And just like when you get a flat tire, you pull over the side of the road, okay? And then you got those cars that have run flats that will take you several miles before you have to change that tire. But at some point, you want to get it changed. Or if you have to pull up the side of the road and change your tire, change your tire quick. But the goal is to change the tire quick and keep moving. Because the longer you stay on the side of the road, you're losing time to your destination. So that's what this was, Exodus was all about. They're finally leaving from the slave master's house. Pharaoh. They're getting out of there. So they're walking across the Red Sea. Beautiful story, beautiful exodus. They're moving. They're quickly moving. Because Moses had to tell them, you got to move quickly. I don't hear nothing you got to say. I want you to move. Okay? Let me hurry up. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this one too. So, 40 years. 40 years. Additional years. Was a death sentence. Because someone on the line, the children of Israel... Has started to disobey God. Okay. They have started to disobey God. God had told them just to follow Moses. They got to the wilderness. They started complaining. God gave them manna to eat. But they kept complaining. We, and, 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 and the thing came out of their mouth is. Man Moses. Or they were telling each other. We should have stayed. In Egypt. We had it better there. The slave master was taking care of us and we was in slavery. We, sh we should have stayed. We should never come this far. And basically what they was doing, they were reneging. At first, they were so happy and so joyous to get out from the slave master's house. Because that was a big process right there, getting everybody out of there. They said, who oh, I mean, you guys want to leave? Everybody raised their hand because they were tired of being pressed down. So it was time for them to leave. Everybody was excited. Then they had second thoughts. When they got to chapter 11 through 12. And what happened was rebellion set in. Okay? Rebellion set in. Complaining set in. Now, this didn't happen until Pharaoh and his army drowned in the Red Sea. Because God said, let me show you the miracle first. I'm going to take you guys from the slave master's house all the way across the Red Sea. And I'm going to part it like you parting your hair. If you go to the barbershop and get a haircut, I'm going to part the Red Sea and give you guys plenty of time to get food. And then when Pharaoh's army get there, I'm going to let them get to almost the middle of it. Then I'm going to let the water come back and slap them in the face and kill them. And that's what happened to all Pharaoh and his army. They drowned it in the Red Sea. I remember Aretha Franklin was saying that song some years ago with James Cleveland, the Southern, Southern California Mass Choir. Pharaoh and his army drowned it in the Red Sea. So, and I heard the historians today saying some of them actually went to the Red Sea for research and they found chariots and wheels still at the bottom of the Red Sea. <laughs> you can't ask for no more confirmation than that. So now we're in the desert. They parted the Red Sea. God closed it up. 
Pharaoh's so army drowned it. Now we're on the other side. Let's take a look at what happens. The children of Israel begin to rebel and start complaining. The people lack faith in God and wanted to return back to Egypt. Even Moses, even Moses. See, at some point, these people begin to work on Moses' nerves. And when you let folks in life work on your nerve and get to your last nerve, it's going to cause you to perhaps not hear God. Perhaps do things your way while you're trying to lead the people. Because I'm telling you something. I used to be a pastor. And I know how hard-headed people can be. Sheep, people, are like, people as, as, as written in the Bible, are like sheep. And sheep is stubborn. But you still lead sheep. But you drive cattle. <laughs> There's a difference. And one thing about the sheep. Jesus left the 99 and went looking for that one because nine, nine and a half won't do. He's concerned about every one of us. He left the 99 and went and looked for that one that had wandered off. Jesus loves us and he knows we're sheep. He knows it. But sometimes even sheeps can... <laughs> let, let me move. Let me, let me move quickly. So, the people have vexed Moses spirit so much that it caused him to disobey God and once it did all the children of Israel was in the desert God said come here Moses look out down yonder out there you see all that land out there that's the land of milk and honey that's the land of promise he said but guess what Moses you will never see it because you disobeyed me you disobeyed me when you struck the rock. I didn't tell you to do that. So Moses let all these people. He went to Pharaoh, told Pharaoh let the people go. And when it got to him, leading the people even further, going to the promised land, he could not go. And as we know today from scripture, Moses did not go to the promised land. He could not cross over. Because he allowed the people to get on his nerves and disobey God. Now the slavery in Egypt was horrible. Because you can imagine how slavery could be. Sometimes the road to God's glory may not be short. Because I know in my life that's short true with me. Let me read that again. The road to God's glory or the road to God's best may not be short. But sometimes where God is taking you, he's taking you the long way, not the short way. He's taking you the long way because he wants you to see the scenery and experience what it is to be broke, what it is to be put out, what it is to lose something. So when you do recover, like Job did when he lost everything, when you do recover, you'll be appreciative. Because I'm going to tell you something. You'll never know what it is to lose something until you lose it. You'll never know what it is to go to a divorce until you've been through one. You'll never know You'll never know how bad it feels to have $20 in a bank account. And that's all you got to your last name. So. The road to success as it relates to God may not be short. So you got to equip yourself right now. My next point I want to make. Everybody that departed Egypt. Get this. Everybody that departed Egypt. Didn't make it to the promised land. They started out. But they didn't make it. I guess there's, the tensions was right. But there's certain qualifications that people must meet. In the order. To stay in tune and connected with God. First of all, you got to be obedient, number one. Number two, you got to know how to follow instructions. Because in this world that we live in now, we got way too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Whether they be in the church, whether they be in the neighborhood, I don't care, on your work, on your job, it's the same thing. And when you got a hundred people trying to tell you what to do, and this person tell you what to do, that person will, for you don't, you start getting confused. 
That's what society that we live in today. So, now my next point is, somebody made a statement recently, and the statement was, we will go back to normal very soon, they said. Anybody want to go back to normal now? Can't wait till we get out of 2020. Everybody want to return back to normal. Well, let me put something in your head today. Put something in your ears. Things will never be normal again. I don't care how we want it, how we look at it. It will never be normal again. And I'm going to walk you through why I made that statement. So. They said things. I can't wait till it gets normal. I can't wait to get out of 2020. But we don't know what 2021 going to bring. Okay. So I would say. How can the human flesh predict the future? How can a carnal man predict the future? The children of Israel wanted to go back to normal too. Are you listening to me? The children of Israel wanted to go back to normal too. After being delivered from Egypt for over 40 years. But God wouldn't allow them to go back to slavery. Because he said once I bring you out you stand out. And they're going to be them going back and forth. They say no tug of war. You want you out you are out. So everything in life happens for a reason. Instead, God, instead God came up with another plan for their lives. And they would not cross over into the promised land. Another 40 years would be the fix. So, like I said in the beginning, it's never a good thing to look back when you've been through something. Because that's what Lot's wife did. She turned to a pillar of salt. We had the same problem with the slaves that were set free. When Abraham Lincoln set the slaves free, people were so accustomed of the plantation, they didn't want to leave. They said, that's all we know is what our master said, and our master this, and our master that. But they didn't have no rights, they didn't have no respect. They didn't have no dignity. And they wanted to stay right there because they didn't look at the possibility of freedom. It is amazing how freedom can knock at your door and you still miss the point. That's what this story is about with the children of Israel because they had 400 years of hatred. They have 400 years of being picked on, picked out, and be picked on, and be slapped, and be kicked, and be whipped. And you would think they would be so appreciative to God, and to Moses, and to the Pharaoh, and anybody else, that they can finally get a chance to be free. Wow. What a story. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So. They were afraid to leave the plantation. Now breaking free from that mindset of bondage is no joke. Because once you have a mindset of slavery, first of all, it must happen in your mind first. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Your mind needs to change. Your thought pattern needs to change. That you're no longer in chains and captivity, but you are now been set free. And some people don't want to be free. That's why the children of Israel got to, got to complaining. We ain't got no water. We ain't got no milk. We ain't got this. We got that. And wanted to go back to the slave master. And the same thing happened in the civil rights movement. The same thing. So God has invited us to something greater than our past. But many still prefer bondage over freedom. It's just like being on house arrest after being freed. You're still in bondage. You're no longer in a prison. But maybe the prisons have got too crowded, so we don't let you stay in your house. But you got to 
ankle bracelet on, so therefore you're still in bondage. You're out behind the prison walls, but you're still in bondage because you got to act, act the ankle brace and that we can monitor you where you go, where you're going to, where we can see you. You can't drink no alcohol, you can't smoke no weed because you're still under control of the state. And I believe that's how the children of Israel was. They act like they still had ankle braces on because that's the, no matter what you, you, you told them, it wasn't good enough. It was not good enough. So, the ankle brace, either way, you're still in bondage, either way. John 8 and 36 states, if the son, if the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And this works in the natural as well as the spiritual. Now, for the most part, people want you to think that things will return to normal. But as you look around you, things are everything but normal. From the economy to everything else. I'm finished with this episode, but I'm coming back. Because I want to take you to where we are right now in 2020, COVID-19. Because if everything that I've said to you connects from bondage to freedom. Tell somebody made the statement, well, I like it here better than being free. God said, who the Son has set free, is free indeed. And once God frees you, you're just free. It also reminds me of Paul and Silas locked in prison. But at midnight, they begin to praise God. And guess what? Every bit of shackle and the stocks and the chains fell to the ground they were free it's obvious that they were free Paul and Silas could have got up and did just what they wanted to do but they stood fast but they were free and they recognized that they were free so I'm hoping that this message because I'm coming with part two next week I'm hoping that this message will bring you that are listening to the, real, to the realization that it's time for you to escape from bondage. Every one of you are slave to something. Every one of us. God has come to set you free, but you gotta be willing to move. And when God bring you out, don't look back. Saying it was better over here, it was better over there. If God take you away from a hellacious woman, whether it's a marriage or relationship, don't go back to that, because you're done. If he take you away from people on your job, working your last nerve, making you want to jump off a building, don't go back to that. Because remember, when God shuts one door, he'll open another one up. And can't nobody open up a prosperity door like God can without the prosperity messages. Because the most messages you hear now from these big shop millionaire pastors and preachers, they're billionaires. And they claim to us that they're going to heaven rich. They don't want to get to heaven. They want to have money in their pockets. But now in this season, God's began to expose them and they secret lies and things that they've been doing in the closet. And now it's coming to light. A false prophet will always be a false prophet. Now I just figured I had to throw that in. But anyway, um, Next week, we're going to take you to where we are right now, 2020, and how things, and I'm going to break it down for you, will not become normal ever again. This is your new normal, whether you want to accept it or not. This is your new normal. So. In the meantime, between the time, always remember, life is to be enjoyed. Hit that description and notification, and guess what? We'll see you 
on the next video. And until we meet again on this level, remember, moving forward is your best option. Because when you look back, it's going to stop you and it's going to hinder you from moving forward. Have a wonderful day and be blessed.